brightest of days. Cloudy, but still warm. 65, 70 degrees here in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the Ask Me Your Advisor FinTech Questions. This is a free for all edition. No question is off limits. You should be able to ask it and I'll give you my uncensored thoughts on it. I don't swear, but I'll give you uncensored thoughts. The FPPAD Bits and Bytes edition for August 28th is online. Go ahead and take five minutes, 45 seconds to watch that. It gives you that weekly recap of BlackRock Purchasing Future Advisor, the Salesforce Financial Services Cloud, and a new white paper released by Kaleido out in San Diego by Angie Herbers and Kristen Luke because they see a disturbing trend in the industry which is rapidly declining profit margins, which is bad stuff. And it makes me do a spit take or two in the video. But they have a white paper out there that talks about how to best incorporate these online advice solutions, which is like Future Advisor, into your business. So you can look to providers like Gemstep and Trizic, um, maybe Quovo and other online services, you know, upside from InvestNet. Incorporate that into your business. Um, and who is it? Tina Powell just released a branded one just for women clients, which is an interesting. I went and checked it out. It's powered by Gemstep. The name escapes me. It's like she money, but the name escapes me. I need your, I need your input to correct me on what it is. Um, went and checked out the site. Very well designed. Very well built. Um, I know Tina's done a couple of videos on. Uh, her YouTube channel, but that was the opportunity I see that she can capitalize for this new site is Where's the video? Where's the passionate plea for actual a connection with Tina and a connection with her team? Because right now There's good content. There's good photos, but there's no video or at least I couldn't find it which means it might be buried I, I, I'm just putting myself in the shoes of a consumer if I were able to see Tina and see how passionate she is about helping this segment of the population although it's a wide segment, it's just women, 50% uh, plus or minus of the population, I want to see her. And this is probably commentary on why LearnVest had some of its success is Alexa Von Tobel was a public figure. Alexa had that TED talk with tens of thousands, hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands of views. And I think she became the face and known for what LearnVest was trying to do with planning. And Alexa kept that up, kept in the spotlight doing media interviews, but also creating their own content on behalf of LearnVest. And that creates a bit more of a connection versus a website with an invest now button that says, we're gonna give you a low cost solution, but not have any video content. So I see that as an opportunity to improve it. You know, it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's an opportunity to improve and that's everything you can always do to improve your business. So seriously, you've got one more minute before I shut off to ask me your advisor FinTech questions about video services, about online investment advice, about trading this week. Uh, and so it's an interesting reflection to think about how did your systems perform this week? How did your client communication perform this week? Did it perform flawlessly? Did you find hiccups? Did you have issues with trading? Because uh, there's a lot of extreme volatility. There was that disconnected pricing on Monday with some exchange traded funds. Always concerns me when things like that happen. Been talking privately about whether or not automated investment solutions handled those disconnects and prices appropriately. Uh, Colin Roche, was it Pragmatic Capital? Colin, you have to forgive me. I forget what site you run. We had a conversation back and forth on, yeah, what's missing? Personality is what's missing. Um, we had a conversation back and forth with Colin about whether or not tax loss harvesting algorithms were going in to those disconnected ETF trades. What's missing in the robo space? I think here's what they have and they're doing well, doing a basic assessment and basic asset allocation. What are they missing? They're not, there's the opportunity of like mint.com or Yodely to look in your bank accounts, look in your credit card accounts and say, hey, wait, before you put this $2,000 in the market, we see you've got a bunch of credit card debt. You might wanna go pay that off first before you put it in the market. Or tell us about your insurance coverage. Do you have really low liability coverages? 
that's an issue. Go raise those liability. Yes, it's going to increase your premium, but it's going to protect you in the event that you have an accident. So the, the robos, the online services don't do any of that stuff now. And if they say, hey, we want to help the general population, so many people don't get access to the advice that they need, that's the advice that they need. The advice to pay off their credit cards, to spend their money, spend less than what they earn each month, then they can figure out what to do with investing in asset allocation after those that low-hanging fruit has been taken care of. So in my opinion, that's what the online services are missing right now. I was optimistic that LearnVest was going to be able to fill that gap. Now they're part of an insurance company, and you know that they're going to be they have to be promoting insurance products and insurance solutions in addition to some of the other advice. So I hope that I'm optimistic again that they can still make a positive difference for everyone, but they're going to have that conflict of, hey, by the way, we noticed your insurance coverage is low and we just happen to sell insurance products. Please buy those from us. If they disclose that conflict, that's great. I just, I want people to get the advice that they need and to get the advice that just doesn't come with strings attached, that doesn't come with a lot of conditions. So that's what I think some of the robo solutions are missing today. It's easy to ask a few questions and then spit out an asset allocation, but then what? This whole week, um, Aaron Klein said it best, it's, it's been four days since the volatility on Monday. You can't have robo-advisors putting up the banner that says, hey, mission accomplished. We didn't lose any clients. We actually got more clients. Well. Four days does not a trial make. What happens, and what I responded is, clients are cauldrons. Their attitudes, their beliefs, they bubble and they boil, and soon that cauldron boils over. Maybe it boiled over for some clients on Monday, but maybe it takes a couple of weeks of volatility, of extreme market swings in the negative direction for that cauldron to boil over. Then what? What's to prevent people from logging into their online dashboard and saying, I'm going to dial back my aggressive slider to conservative because that just makes me feel better. And they do that at the bottom of the market. And then they're missing the entire upside because it's so easy to just say, I'm just, I'm going to move that slider and let the automated system put me more conservatively. And then when is the automated service going to say, you know, you've been invested very conservatively. You've missed whatever. I, you, you got to dial that back up. I, is that communication plan there? I don't know. I have no idea. So that's another opportunity, missed opportunity for the online investment services. I've taken up as much of your time already. Remember, FBPAD Bits and Bytes for August 28th is live out on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. As always, send me your questions at Bill Winterberg on Twitter. Thanks for paying attention to this Periscope. And if it's not raining on Monday because we have that tropical storm coming through Florida and maybe through Georgia, I'll do another Periscope on Monday. So save your fintech questions for me. Everyone have a great weekend. Thank you so much.